Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll share with you what we had this past week. Our dinners were easy, budget friendly, and I'm sure you and your family will love them. So if you'd like some dinner ideas, just keep watching. This first night we had slow cooker creamy Italian chicken over rice. This is one of our family's favorites. I have a separate video on this that I will link in the description box below. So go check that out if you'd like the recipe. I just served that with some side salads with some ranch dressing and that's dinner tonight. Tonight for dinner, I'm going to make a really easy barbecue chicken pizza. So to get started, I'm just going to take this pizza crust mix from Walmart. It's their great value version. I'm going to place that in a mixing bowl. I've made this one other time before and it was actually really good. It makes a 12 to 14 inch pizza crust and it's less than 60 cents. And if you had even a larger family and you didn't make even two pizza crusts, it's still a really good deal, very budget friendly. So I'm just gonna follow the instructions on the back of the package. I'm gonna add my water and then I'm going to take my fork and stir it about 30 times times and as you'll see it very quickly comes together to form a ball. The package then says to add about a teaspoon of oil over the top but I'm just going to spray it with a little bit of cooking spray. Next I'm going to cover this with a towel and set it aside for five minutes. I'm going to preheat my oven to 475 degrees. I'm then going to take my pizza pan and spray it with some cooking spray. And then I'm going to take my dough and press it out onto my pan. Now this pizza pan here is 16 inches. The package says this will make a 12 to 14 inch. We like a little bit thicker crust, so I am going to go a little bit shy and make it closer to 12 inches. But you just wanna pat it out until it's a circle. And then the instructions say to generously prick it with a fork, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to pop that into the oven for about five to seven minutes. Next, I'm going to add a layer of barbecue sauce. Now, this is what I really love about making homemade pizza and why I think it's so budget friendly is you really can use whatever you have. You can use pizza sauce, barbecue sauce, buffalo sauce, Alfredo sauce, whatever you have, and you can use whatever meat and toppings you have. It's a great way to clean out the refrigerator. So next, I'm going to take some shredded chicken that I have. This is just a couple of chicken breasts I put in the crock pot the other day and cooked it and then shredded it. I'm then going to take some crumbled bacon that I have left over in the refrigerator. I'm then going to take some pineapple tidbits that I have drained. One of our favorite pizzas is Papa John's Hawaiian barbecue chicken pizza. So that's kind of what I'm going for here. I'm then going to drizzle a little bit more barbecue sauce on top. And then I'm going to add my cheese. I have a little bit of mozzarella cheese here. So I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to add some shredded cheddar cheese. And finally, I'm going to place this back in the oven for about 9 to 11 minutes or until the pizza crust is golden brown and the cheese is melted. My husband loves wings with his pizza, so I have these TGI Friday's chicken wings that I got on BOGO at Publix a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to hook those in the air fryer and serve that with the pizza for him. And here is the finished pizza out of the oven. I'm going to allow it to cool for a few minutes before I cut into it. And here are the finished plates. We have the pizza and then on my husband's plate, we have the wings. I left these in the air fryer for a couple of minutes too long. They got a little bit dark, but my husband said that they were still really good. I served some of this Bolt House chunky blue cheese dressing alongside of his wings. He did not really care for the blue cheese dressing very much. We've tried their ranch dressing from Bolt House and it's really, really good. So if you haven't given the ranch dressing a try, I definitely recommend that. But that's dinner tonight. For dinner tonight, I'm going to make some slow cooker queso chicken tacos. I've seen this all over YouTube and the internet for a long time. I saw it recently over on Living That Mama Life and I decided to finally try it. I will link her channel in the description box below. So to start out, I'm going to spray my crock pot liner with some cooking spray. I'm then going to take about two pounds of chicken and add that to my crock pot. My chicken breasts are still about halfway frozen. Next, I'm going to add some taco seasoning. I'm going to flip my chicken over and then season the other side. Next, I'm going to add a can of Rotel. This is the Aldi version. Then I'm going to add a jar of salsa con queso. This is the great value version. Then 
Then I'm going to cover this and cook this on low for about six hours. To go along with dinner, I'm going to make this old El Paso cheesy Mexican rice. I'm just going to cook it according to the package instructions. Once the chicken has finished cooking, I'm going to remove it, shred it, and then add it back to my mixture. And here are the finished plates. I just served the chicken on some fajita sized tortillas along with the toppings of our choice. I then have the cheesy Mexican rice and then I warmed up some leftover refried beans on the stove. I added a little bit of sour cream, some salt and pepper and some hot sauce and that's dinner tonight. Tonight for dinner, I'm going to make firehouse meatloaf and stovetop mac and cheese. My mom used to make this meatloaf and I haven't had it in years so I wanted to go ahead and make it. So to get started, I'm going to take my ground beef and I'm going to place it in my mixing bowl. I will make sure to include the recipe for the meatloaf as well as the stovetop mac and cheese in the description box below. I'm going to add an egg. Then I'm going to add a little bit of onion that I have diced up as well as a couple of cloves of garlic. I'm going to add some Italian breadcrumbs. Then I'm going to add some pasta sauce. I'm using this tomato basil from Great Value, but just use your family's favorite. Next, I'm going to take my cookie sheet and line it with foil and spray it with cooking spray. I'm then going to use my hands and mix together my meatloaf. You wanna make sure that it's well incorporated, but you also wanna make sure that you don't over mix your meat. And once that's mixed together pretty well, I'm going to take about half of that mixture and pat that out onto my cookie sheet. Once that's in the shape that I want my meatloaf to be, I'm just going to take my fingers and make a little trough through the middle of the mixture. Next, I'm going to add my cheese. What I have here is just a block of mozzarella cheese that I have cut into small cubes. You definitely don't want to use fresh mozzarella here that has too much moisture for it but I'm just going to add that cheese and then I'm going to take the rest of the meatloaf mixture and cover the cheese and then I'm going to take my two fingers and kind of pinch the two meatloaves together so that it forms one cohesive meatloaf. You wanna to try to not let any pockets come through so that the cheese can escape, but if it does, it's not a big deal. Now to finish this meatloaf, instead of using the traditional like ketchup glaze, you're just going to take some of your leftover pasta sauce and spread that on top of your meatloaf. And then I'm going to place this in a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour. For one of the sides tonight, I'm going to heat up this can of Simply Seasoned Turnip Greens. For my other side, I'm going to make some stovetop mac and cheese. So in this saucepan, I'm going to add in some butter and I'm going to stir that around a little bit so it melts. In a separate pot, I have cooked some elbow macaroni noodles and those are draining. To my butter, I'm just going to add my flour, whisk that in, and then I'm going to allow the flour to cook for about a minute. Next, I'm going to whisk in my milk. If you're not familiar with making like bechamels or gravies, when you add your milk, you might think, oh my gosh, what did I do? Why is it so lumpy? Don't worry, just keep whisking. You will eventually whisk all of those lumps out and it will come together. You will see that it starts to thicken and at that point I'm going to season it. I'm just going to keep it simple tonight with some salt and pepper, but you can absolutely go crazy with the seasonings. Garlic powder, paprika, some dry mustard, Cajun seasoning, whatever seasonings you like. Next, I'm going to add in my cheese. Tonight, I'm just using some cheddar cheese from a block that I shredded. But again, this is really versatile. Make this your own. Use whatever cheese you and your family like or what you have on hand. I've used mozzarella, Velveeta, American, Pepper Jack, Colby Jack, all different kinds of cheeses, and you can even do a combination of cheeses. Next, I'm going to add in my macaroni noodles and give that a stir. 
And tonight, just to be easy, I'm just going to leave this as a stovetop mac and cheese, but to do a baked macaroni and cheese, which I do a lot using the same recipe, you would just take this at this point, place this into a grease casserole dish and bake this at 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. You can top it with some extra shredded cheese or with some panko breadcrumbs, that's really good, or also some bacon bits is really good. And here are the finished plates. I have the meatloaf, the greens, and the mac and cheese. My husband has some of this hot pepper sauce for his greens. This meatloaf is really good, and it's nice to change up our typical meatloaf night. Tonight's dinner is going to be super, super easy and quick. I'm taking a lot of help from the store. I have this gyro kit that I got at Aldi a few weeks ago. We've had this before. It's actually really good. There's enough in here to make five gyros. So basically, you just thaw this the night before, and then there are heating instructions on the back of the package. And then I'm going to heat this Uncle Ben's Ready Rice Rice Pilaf up in the microwave. Here is what comes in the kit. You have your tzatziki sauce, your gyro meat, and your pita bread. Next, I'm going to heat up my meat and bread according to the package directions. So I'm just going to sear the meat on both sides. And then back here, I have the pita bread warming up in a skillet. You just need to cook it for about 30 seconds on each side. And here are the finished plates. I have the pita bread, the gyro meat. I also have some sliced tomatoes and the tzatziki sauce on my husband's plate. And then I have the same, except I just have some thinly sliced onions and that's dinner tonight. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.